Welcome, welcome, welcome. Same script, different cast, contact one, which is an extension of the SSDC podcast, which I do with Wikipedia plot reader and movie pop up. You're with me seeing it. I think it. What is happening on the outsider? In the pines, in the pines. So you know I think everything is a clue to something else. So I had to look it up. In the pines, there is a song by, I guess that's Lead Belly. My girl, my girl, don't you lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't ever shine. I would shiver the whole night through. So I'm like, where did you sleep last night, girlfriend? But I don't know if that has anything to do with it. This episode, we start with Holly and Jack. They're still on their way to the barn, like they were in the end of episode six. Jack shows Holly his puffy welts. I really don't know any name for these pussy things on the back of his neck, the hypnotic bumps. He shows those to her, and he says that he's just like Tracy. He's being used, like he knows it, and he tells her this. So the entity gave him a migraine, and so he's just having all type of convulsions and stuff in the car. Jack does ask Holly, why him? And she basically tells him that the entity draws on pain and he has pain. I mean, she expressed that to him in previous episodes, just the way that he was and just his demeanor. He's vulnerable, he's pain. And so I guess easier for possession, if you think of it like that, if you think of different possession movies, like The Conjuring, and even with like the the first Conjuring, It was easier to get into the mother. They weren't really a religious family. Same thing with Reagan from Exorcist, wasn't really religious. And so they find someone who's vulnerable and get up in there. And Jack also, he confesses to Holly what the entity has made him do. And he says that he spied for it, he shopped, he's provided his catering services. So he's he's being very open about everything he's done. And Claude, the strip club owner, he sells it. Back at the Andersons, Jeannie asks Ralph, you know, where's Holly? It's like, I don't know, she probably left out this morning. Hmm, she doesn't know anybody in this town. Where would she go? I don't know. In her wifely way, she basically was like, you need to find her. She doesn't know anybody here. Someone needs to protect her. So Ralph calls around looking for Holly, finds out that both her and Jack are missing. Ralph meets up with Alec Pelly at Jack's place. They pick the lock, go inside, and from that, that crazy fight Jack had with his dead mother. Yeah, remember that? They see it's just ramshacked, and they see blood all over the walls, and so Alec immediately calls Solomon like, man, we need to ping the phones, it's crazy here. Solomon was being a dick like, I got mad meetings today, I can't do it. He's just like, you know what, you wanna come over here and see this blood? You wanna come over here and see this blood? It's like, oh, snap. Oh, this is, oh, this is real. Okay. And so then Solomon pings the phone. Ralph and Alec get the locale of Holly and Jack, and they pursue. During the drive, Alec reveals to Ralph sort of another, I don't want to say a worldly experience, but a time where he said that he was scared shitless is when he was lost in the woods, it's like four in the morning, and he heard something call his name. And this was moments before the police found him, but something whispered his name and it's like you could tell it wasn't of this world. So back to the car where we're driving with Holly and Jack. She tells Jack that she has to go to the bathroom. He's like, nah, we're so close, we're not stopping. She's like, nah, I gotta go. Holly goes to take her purse and Jack is like, you don't need that, why you gonna need to do that? You can can pee on yourself right here. She's like, no, you don't want me to tell you, do you? I'm on my period. And he's like, oh, man always gets squeamish with that. He's just like, probably take everything. Take your bag, take the bag in the back, take everything you see here. No, go go take care of yourself. He lets her go, but he takes the car keys. A few moments pass. You see Holly in the bathroom just like frantic, like what am I gonna do trying to plan her next escape? So Ancy, Jack gets out of the car. You know, right before he did that, he was like trying to go through her phone, trying to crack her passcode, probably doing one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Can't get in there. So when he goes to the bathroom, she can hear him coming up. She throws a toilet seat through the back window. And as soon as Jack runs to the back, she heads out the front. Why? Cause she has an extra set of car keys. It was a diversion. So she darts out of there, haul asses to the car, and she speeds off. Jack is blah, 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 pew, pew. He's shooting at her. But luckily, she gets away. And at this time, I was so excited. I was like, she's out of there. I was like, oh, my gosh. 
I wouldn't know what was going to happen, but that was crazy. That was a crazy scene. So Ralph and Alec, they finally get to that location, the rest stop. They see Holly's broken phone and they wonder if she's dead. I mean, they do go inside of the the gas station store, but that worker was on their phone the whole time and saw absolutely nothing. They're not sure what to do. Should they drive around and go look for a car? Should they go back home? And it turns out they end up just going back home or back to the office. So we also see Jack. So Jack ended up walking away off into the forest or something, and he's actually contemplating suicide. He has a gun in his mouth, unsure if he wants to pull the trigger. And he just like lays on the ground. He's like, I just don't even know what I need to do anymore. He's just, yeah, he's ready to end it which is what Holly brought up about ending your life because you just, it's not your own life anymore. This thing has a hold of you and it's not gonna let go. Jack eventually hitchhikes. I have no idea where he where he's going or what he's doing, but he hitchhikes somewhere. And so like in the next scene, we see just Holly sitting, she's talking to Solomon, Ralph, Alec, Jeannie. They're probably at the Anderson home. Basically, she tells them that Jack was taking her somewhere to eliminate her. Whatever this entity is, it's it's not about, it's about eating children and eliminating its obstacles, which Holly was one. And Holly reveals that she felt like Jack was really struggling with that too, as far as whether or not to kill her. Eunice shows her picture of Claw, the former strip club owner. She looks at it, she's like, yeah, but she's like, wait a minute, no, I don't recognize him. And so when Eunice and Ralph are talking a little bit later on the porch, he tells Ralph that he showed her the picture, but it wasn't like she didn't know him, it was, she can't put a finger on it, but she's kind of familiar with the guy. We also find out that Jack was driving Holly away from the barn. The barn was two hours away from where they were. Ralph wonders why Jack would wanna hurt Holly and Eunice is like, dude, you know why. Holly told you, you have to stop doing this and just know that you're not gonna understand everything that you can't explain. And surprise, Andy the boo, from Ohio shows up, they hug, and he wants in on the investigation. During the same time, probably, I don't know, maybe a little bit later, Holly confronts Ralph about the photos. Not just any photos, the photos that people were drawing from memory. The van thief, Jeannie, Jessa, all these people who have seen this entity and they were thinking, you know, it was being captured as a caricature and it all looks the same. And Holly is pissed like, you knew about this. You heard me talking about this. You didn't speak up. It's like, you you knew, you knew all of this was going on right now. And then she says it. I mean, she has the picture of Claude there. The entity is shaping into Claude. Jeannie tells Ralph this. He has to get over himself and stuff to the side because he's standing in the way of progress. Ralph is distraught as hell. And he calls his therapist and is like, man, I need to see you right now. And it's an emergency. So when he gets there, he asks him if he believes in good and evil. Ultimately, Ralph comes to the conclusion that he needs to let go to let something in, but he doesn't know if it's God or if it's evil. Then the therapist says that there's just a lot of stuff we don't know, nor we will ever know about the world. And that's what he's left with. So by the end of the episode, Holly has this horrible nightmare that Jack shot it in the face, in the face. And so she got up. She was screaming, so it may have been the entity like, hey, this is gonna, this is gonna happen to you if you don't stop the investigation. Or it could just be her just, I mean, she had a horrible day and she could have died. So it could just been that as well. So we'll, we'll touch on Glory Maitland. Throughout this episode, she went back to work because they're being homeschooled, gotten some sort of an altercation not an altercation, but she she is sassy with her words. She felt like the potential home buyers were only interested in the home so that they could see the murderer's wife in person and she confronts them about it. Her colleague was trying to tell her maybe she should move. He's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna move. And he's like, but Glory needs money. She has no money. So she does call Solomon. It's like, I wanna sue. I wanna sue everybody. She doesn't say individuals, but she's more like the department of this, the office of that, the district attorney. That's probably how she's gonna get that money. All right, episode eight, ready for it. Hope you're ready for it too. Thanks so much for joining me going over this recap. Good ass show. See ya.